What is going on guys, we're here with some smoke on Snake Draft Phase 3 live coverage. We got EU vs Gornra this time. And yeah, for you guys that have been wondering where the uploads are at, I thought my router died the other day, but uh, thankfully I could fix that issue. And yeah, I hope there was going to be more uploads in the next days. Basically this is um, like a fatter type of team that you would expect EU to bring. It has no hazard control, so he's basically forced to leave with Sable and go for Protect to get it Mega Evolved so that the Ferrozone cannot get up hazards or the Lando cannot get up hazards that well. Um, usually I would think that the Keldeo is uh, like Scarf on this team, but since EU likes to use like a lot of balance and stall type of teams, something like along those lines, yeah. Um, this could, I could see this being like uh, Ithbex uh, slash uh, Calmind Kelly with Z-Move. I'm thinking either the Kelly or the Lando is the Z-Move user. This is probably a Band Star. Obviously a Mega Mawa. Uh, Spex Ferro Rocks Land. There is a uh, defensive Zap this with Defog Roost and then either Heatwave and Discharge or HPS and Discharge. Um, so this is a potential sub DD Zygarde because he has uh, most likely Toxic Spikes on the Toxic Packs. So that makes a lot of sense to combine those two mods. Um, standard Defensive Steeler, Spadef Sailor, because you need that to switch into Magma Stone from Heatran. Like, you have to remake Spadef. I'm not sure if one of those two here would, could be potentially Scarf, but I'm thinking that EO doesn't have a Scarfer. I'm thinking he's Defensive Lando. Um, he has to be Defensive Lando with HPIs because opposing Zagat is a big threat to his team. Yeah, he has to be HPIs Defensive. So the Heatran could definitely be um, some sort of offensive, but the Lando has to be Defensive. So they're taking quite the time here to pick the lead. I assume they're gonna lead. Um, he's gonna lead uh, Morwell and he's gonna lead uh, Sableye. And then he's pretty much forced to go for Player of Turn One because you don't want Sableye going for Wisp. If you like predict that and go for a ST or something like that, then your Morwell would get burnt. And burnt Morwell even at plus two is not a big threat anymore um, because he can then switch into like Lando or Toxapex and he can haze you. Like, if you're burnt, it's just really bad for uh, for your Morwell. Um, so, what EO could have done here, he could have let off with Heatran. And then he could have potentially doubled into Sableye. I feel like that would have been a good play as well. I didn't think about that at first. But yeah, he just plays it safe and goes for Protect. And Gonro doesn't want to risk a Wisp. Um, doesn't want to go for SD, which makes a lot of sense. So now he's either going to go Heatran or Landro or Pex. So Gonro can double. Um, if he blitz the Heatran or the Pex, he can maybe double into his Band Tar. But if he breaks the Heatran or the Lando, he can also double to Keldeo. So let's see what he does. He doubles into Keldeo. It has a Toxapex. Um, so that didn't work out too well too well for Gondra. Um, he's probably going to be forced out. Um, if he's a common Keldeo, I guess he can potentially set up on this. Um, if this Toxapex has Toxic on top of Toxic Spikes, which means it doesn't have Haze, it would be really annoying for this uh, for the Zapdos as well. There's the Zapdos. Um, because he's going to... Um, Try to defog the T-Spikes away, but if he has, like I said, Toxic plus Toxic Spikes, this is going to be really bad. Um, but I assume EO is going to switch out here into his Sableye, because like I said, they uh, they run a lot of Spadef. Um, like, either Max Spadef or a lot of Spadef if they don't run Max. Like, it's still a really good amount of Spadef if they don't run Max. Um, but yeah, he's most likely going to be forced to defog. He's, um, he can afford to defog uh, T-Spikes away probably um, the whole game, because he has um, more defog PP than... Toxic Spikes, because of the pressure ability from Zapdos. Like, if he keeps going into Zapdos on Pex, um, he doesn't have, Eo doesn't have enough Toxic Spikes PP. But if Eo has Toxic, that would be really clutch. I've already said it like two times, I think. Um, but if he doesn't have Toxic, he's probably gonna switch, yep. Um, like, it makes a lot of sense to not have Toxic, because um, Haze is really necessary on Toxic Pex. Especially if that is a call and kill you, Haze is gonna come and clutch. Um, so I assume he's gonna fish for a Discharge para yep. And EO is going to knock off the, the lefties, I assume, yeah. There is the, the knockoff, the lefties are gone. So now EO is going to recover here, and Gronwa can either fish again, or he can go in a more while put it in recover. So he fishes again for the para, he gets it. No full para, though. And now EO is most likely going to go for a will wisp Gronwa has no will wisp immunity. What is Gronwa even going to do here? I guess he's just going to stay in, because since Burn got nerfed, yeah, yeah, he's just going to stay in. So Eo goes into a lander, so I guess his, his plan is to um, kind of stall out this charge PP. Um, this Landris has to have HP Ice and Earthquake, and then... Huh. What does Landris even have to hit land to zap those? If it's defensive, um, I guess it could have Toxic or Stone Edge. Like, Stone Edge is usually only on Scarf, is what I was trying to say. Yeah, so he has Toxic. I'm um, going to switch into his own Landris. 
I don't know if he predicted a toxic or if he predicted something else. If he predicted a toxic, he would have gone to Ferrothorn. I think he scouted for a potential continental crush, even though that this this lander has to be defensive. I already talked about it. He's weak to Zygar otherwise. But yeah, this is um most likely Gonna's Rocker, so he's probably yeah yeah, he's probably gonna U-turn there because he doesn't want the rocks to get bounced back if he goes to Sableye. But since the Sableye is Spadev, um it's gonna be like kind of 50-50s later on in the game. That was like the first 50-50 type of thing. If you weren't for Rocks there, it would have been up for the entire game because, like I said, EO has no hazard control. But this is a pain for EO to deal with the Zapdos. I think this judge has 24 PP, so he still has a lot of good amount of PP. Um, either either has to go into Sableye and hope he doesn't get parried, or he has. To, I guess he can try to protect here to waste the PP, but it doesn't really help him too much. So he doubles out into Keldeo, I think he predicted the Sableye, so a really nice play by Gondra there. Um, so now he's either going to try to burn the Toxa packs, if he's um, just a Scarf of Specs Keldeo. If he's not a Scarf of Specs, he can try to set up a Calm Mind here. Now he can double into Titar, let's see. But I kind of lost my, thought, my train of thought earlier, I forgot what I wanted to say. Yeah, I was kind of confused as to why he went into land on the opposing land. Though. He doubles into land, that works as well. So he's probably gonna um, U-turn, U-turn. Like uh, that's what I, that's how I would play this. Like at first I would spam U-turn for a while um, because if you if you get the Sableye on the U-turn, oh Gondra the God! Oof, oof. I would I that was a balls of steel to play. I would not have made that play that early. I would have gone for rocks later in the game, not that early. I guess Gondra is just a Jesus because now the rocks are here to stay. This is really. This is a really big turn for Gondra. Um, if he went to Sableye there, that would have been uh, awful for him, but he got it correct. The first time he already went to Celestia, so I figured this time he might go to Sableye, so I would have never went for rocks there. Good god, Gondra's a savage. And he doubles into Keldeo. What the fuck is going on? Calm down, buddy. Um, I think he's either gonna scald here or double out again. Unless, like I said, he could still have Calm Mind. We don't know that yet. Oh, he doubled from Zapdos to Keldeo on on a Lando, uh, not on a Lando, on a Celesteela. So he predicted either the the Heatron or the or the Sableye to come out, which is understandable. But the Heatron has no lefties, so this could definitely be some of. I don't know if it would be Z move turn on EO's team. I assume it has to be Rocks Heatron because EO's Landros showed Toxics. EO's Landros has to have HPS because, like I said, he's weak to Zygarde otherwise. And it also has probably Earthquake, and it could have Protect and the show Toxic. So last move is either U-turn or Protect. So I think his Lando has no rocks and U-turn has the rocks. So he shows to be Calm and Keldeo. So he's most likely Z-move Keldeo. Um, EU is probably just gonna go for Scald here, anticipating a Taunt. Because um, Gondor might want to Taunt, um, because this has Haze. But Gondor can also predict EO to not go for Haze, and he can Calm Mind again. Um, so... If, if Gondor gets some plays correct, this Keldeo is gonna be a huge threat for EO. Like, let's say he calm mines again, as he does decide to calm, let's say if he hazes, let's see if he hazes. He does not haze, so Gondor predicted him to not go for haze. Uh, unfortunately, Eo gets the burn on the first skull, that that was really annoying for Gondra. Um, I, I also, Eo can try to go into Sableye on a turn where he predicts um, Gondra to go for taunt. So there's like a lot of 50-50 type of turns going on. But now that Keldeus are plus two, and it can threaten the packs with a potential taunt, and then set up even more of fire off a plus two, I don't, I don't think it would attack a plus two, I think. Depending on his Z move, if he's Hydro Vortex, it would not do enough at this range. So he goes on the Sable, anticipating a taunt, I think. He goes for a Z move. If this is Hydro Vortex, he's a god, but it's ooh, it's Z Hyper Beam, it's Bright Knight Blitz. So he most likely doesn't have taunt. I assume he has um, a Scald, Sacred Sword, a Common, and Hyper Beam as its moves. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, if that was Hydro Vortex, he would have been in such a good position, but he probably wouldn't have gone for Hydro Vortex there. He probably would have calm minded up again on the packs or went for taunt if he had high robotics instead of the hyper beam. Um, but he comments again knowing that the Sable is forced out. Um, so hyper beam would probably do a lot to the packs, but I don't think it would kill. Uh, because most of the time packs run spidev these days. Um, EO has already a fist dev land, most likely, and a fist dev stealer. So this should definitely be the spidev packs. Um, I don't think. I don't think hyper beam kills. 
Oh, Eos Pax also doesn't have Black Sludge. So this could be a Shed Shell or um, we have seen a Payapa Berry Pax sometimes. And we have also seen um, Z Haze by, used by CL and OT once. That set is Flames, but I, I don't know if he's dead set. Man, this is tough for Gondra because, like, hyper, if you hyper beam here and it doesn't kill, then you have to recharge and then he gets like a free turn to haze and everything. But if you comment again and he hazes, you're also in a really bad position. So I think you have to attack here pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe hyper beam is a roll um, if the pex is a bit more. If the pex is mixed defensive, hyper beam could definitely kill. I could see that. But if it's a really speed death one, which I think it is, then it doesn't kill. So he goes for Hyper Beam, it doesn't kill. And what the fuck? It is that Z Hay said. I did not think he would be that sad. Um that was that was a fine play by EO because even if the Kelly had taunt for some reason, um you cannot taunt Z moves. And now the Kelly has to recharge, EO gets a free toxic spike there. Uh, now the Kelly is forced out. I assume he's gonna go and zap those here. And he does the zap those. Let's see if he doubles and predicts that off. He just he just tries to burn a zap those. That makes sense as well. He gets the burn. So this Pex is well trained. He scalded the first scald burned the Keldeo, and I think that was also the first scald in the Zapdos, and he immediately got the burn. So he's gonna have to um, roost here, I think, right? Yeah. I was about to say defog, but he doesn't want to defog because he has rocks on either side, and rocks are really helpful. Um, if Gondor can also get up spikes somehow, uh, if he weakens the Sable, I won't get some paras, and he can get up more spikes. That would be amazing for Gondor. He gets a para there. Um, he's probably gonna go hard into more while he's anticipating a recover, as he does just do that. Um, now he can go. Oh, this is. Let's see. The thing is, that toxic spikes up. Like otherwise, I would say he could dull in a Tita here. Um, but then like the heat trying to come out. But a toxic packs. But the toxic spikes up. I don't know if he wants to dull into Tita. I mean, he probably has to deal with the Tita getting poisoned. Yeah, yeah. Also, Lando's the other option. That's also a reason why. The Tita covers. Um, the, the switch in the heat run and it covers the switch in the packs if you double the T-Tar, but it doesn't cover the Landris. Um, so like it would be hard to make a play that covers all options. Um, Kelly on the other side would have covered the heat run and the Lando, but it would not have covered the packs. So like, it would have been tough to make the correct double there anyways. But yeah, he just went, decided to SD up. I think he anticipated Toxic packs, that's why he SD'd, or maybe the Sun Stealer. Um, he's forced out here because, um, he was probably just gonna go for Earthquake here. Um, if you makes an aggressive play, you can also go for rocks. But I think he's gonna earthquake. Um, Gondor was never gonna stay in there. His mobile can put in work. He needs the mobile. Like he, he should um, definitely keep the mobile around. Um, so we see it's protect. So probably protect toxic um, earthquake HPIs. Uh, no heat turn on the Landris. And yeah, rocks have to be on heat turn. Oh, I, ju I just said he could go for Roxy, but it's already pretty much confirmed that rocks are on heat turn because of the Landris. Said yeah, my bad, my bad. But yeah, he U turns out um, on a Celesteela. Celesteela takes some chip damage. He can go in a Zapdos here. And yeah, Zapdos is still really annoying for EO. Especially since the Sable is already paralyzed, it rocks are up. Um, so Sable definitely has to like, definitely, Sable has to take some chip every time. And we know it's um, a Defog Zapdos and it showed Discharge. And I think it showed... I, I think it showed Roost as well, right? So, we don't know the last move, depending on the last move, like I said earlier, the Zygarde might wall the Zapdos. Um, Eo is definitely gonna go for Protect here, just to get some lefties on a Celesteela. Um, I mean, Gondor predicts it and goes for Roost, but I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> so Eo is either gonna um, stay in here, go for Leech Sheet, hoping not to get paralyzed, um, or he's gonna switch into... Maybe one of his ground types or Sableye. Um, like, if he would switch into his ground types, then he would anticipate a discharge. Or if he would go Sableye, then he just has to hope that he doesn't get paralyzed. But I think he wants to figure out if this has Heatwave before he switches Zygarde in. Um, depending on the Celesteela, if it's like the mixed defensive one, I think it can probably take a discharge decently well. So he could have also gone for Leech Sheet since it's burned. Since the Zapdos is burned. So he just goes in the packs and gets parried there. I mean, Pex has regenerators so or understand that play. So, like, he's kind of trying to stall out the discharge PP. But, 
Now he's paralyzed. That can definitely um, come into play later in the game. So he goes on mobile there, anticipating a recover as EO pivoted into Zygarde, expecting another discharge. Um, I don't think Marwa dies from full. We see it's lefty Zygarde, so I think it's, um, like I said earlier, that's what I was thinking at Team Preview. It could be the sub DD Zygarde would protect, and uh, it's just one of thousand arrows. I don't think I talked about the entire set, but it's um, it's really su it's supported really well by Toxic Spikes. Since, like, Zygarde cannot Oko Marwa, but I don't think Gondor is going to stay in because, like, Marwa can put in more work. Like, it's not worth it to let it take a huge hit. So his Ferrothorn is probably more fist dev oriented since he brought in on a Zygarde. Um, you just predicted the player of there, like he turned covered the player of. It's not like he looks like a complete god here because he brought in a heat on a feral, but like I, don't, I think he just predicted the player of. Um, uh, now, or like a potential player of. I mean, I guess that was just a genius play because it covered the feral zone and it covered the player of. So that was a fire play by you. Um, so now you can get up his rocks, since he didn't have rocks on uh, Lander, he would have rocks on Tran. So there's the T-Tar, um, I can definitely see um, a Crunch or a Pursuit coming, most likely a Pursuit. Um, if Hedron is gone, that's one of the Mawa checks gone, as we does get the play correct, Hedron lives on 1%, but that's definitely bent damage. Hedron now dies to rocks. Um, if Hedron is gone, that's one of the Mawa checks gone, like I said, so... I like Pex is not really a good Mawa check, since Mawa can SD and uh, Thunder Punch and the Pex is Parrot. So if he can weaken the Landris as he just goes for HP Ice there. Not sure why he went for HP. I think he predicted the, the Zapdos to come out. Uh, but the Gondor just played it safe. Um, so the, the thing is... Eo kinda has to go into Sableye because he doesn't want to let Gondor get up spikes. But if Gondor predicts the Sableye here and goes for Power Whip... Like, if he goes for Power Whip here and Eo goes into Sableye, that would be bad for Eo. But also, if Eo goes into, like, let's say, Pex or Heatran... Or Sex of the Heatran here, and he goes for a Spike, that would also be bad for Eo. So, like, it's, he has to predict correctly. Um, so, Gondor predicts correctly and goes for Power Whip. Um, and now, this is a bit rough here, because... Sableye is forced to go for Recovery here, so I can see Gondor staying in. Because if he Power Whips here and he gets a Parrot, then Sableye was pretty much dead. Um, he could also go hard into Mawal here if he doesn't want to risk. Okay, he power ups again. He does get the power, so now um, he has to hit another power whip. I don't know his other moves. Um, usually it's like knockoff power, bleed sheet spikes. Like uh, the last time I've seen the Iron Head uh, Pharaoh was in was in Auras, and I haven't Jarable. I uh, usually haven't also haven't seen that in a while. But yeah, EO Sableye dies to rocks. So there's no point in switching. He has to has to hope for a power whip dodge and go for recover here. But that was really nicely played by Gondra. Good god. He got up the rocks early where he didn't go Sableye and now he Why did he go for Jarub? Oh my god. He he made he made a miscalc there because Jarub didn't kill. Because the Sableye is paralyzed, uh, Jarub holds power gets weakened, but EO gets paralyzed. That was really unfortunate. Because like he would have been able to recover there. So like Gondor made a miscalc, but he got grazed by the Hanged Gods, and he got the para there. And now he is just, okay, he keeps the Sable as forward. Now he can just Jarable again, because now he's in range from Jarable. He gets a crit on the land, okay, this is really unfortunate. So he sacks up the Sable here, I assume he's going for a hazard. Oop, there's the spikes. So now, um, Gondor has up spikes and rocks, it's gonna be really nice for him. Um, since this is an intimidate, since he has an intimidate off on the Feral Thorn, Zygarde can sub up, so I don't think, uh, yeah, ex ex exactly. I don't think Gondor can afford to stay in, because uh, at minus one, I'm not sure, I don't think he can break the Zygarde substitute. So Eo is gonna go for Protect here, since the Lanus is poisoned. I mean, we see um, some nice, some nice team synergy in Eo's team. He has Toxic Spikes plus Sub Protect Zygarde, and he has Toxic on Lando as well with Sub Protect Zygarde. So he Dragon Dances up, um... He's just going to protect again, he's going to get more leftovers. And the, the Toxic is going to go rack up on Gondra's Landris. And Gondra can, Gondra can also not switch up, because if Gondra switches out and gives us a free substitute, um, it's just super annoying for him to deal with. He just has to stay in. So Eo is going to protect here, um, Gondra's going to HP Ice. And now Eo is going to sub again, let the Toxic wrap up, rack up a bit, until the Landris is in range from Thousand Arrows. Um, it might already be in range. If it's... Nah, I think he's gonna sub one more time to ensure that it's in range. 
But if it's already in range and he knows that, he can just go for T-Arrows. I don't know if the land was spread was revealed yet from Gondor, the, the EVs. Yeah, he stops again. He doesn't want to risk it. I agree with that. Okay, so now it's pretty much in range from arrows, so he can just click arrows here. I mean, he could have protected to get more lefties, but it didn't. Nah, it didn't make a difference. Yeah, seven arrows was fine there. Um, now he's gonna go into either Caldeo or Ferrothorn here. Um, if he goes Zapdos, that will tell us that he has HPIs. But if he, if he doesn't go Zapdos, I think that might tell us that he doesn't have HPIs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why he gyroed, but like, um, miss, yeah, miscalc definitely happened. Like, I think, like, we should not make fun of him or anything like that. Um, like, it makes sense that you don't want to miss a power rip, and he thought gyro ball killed. But yeah, he goes on the Ferrothorn, and, um, I think he's gonna just power rip or gyro ball. Uh, Eo is gonna protect, actually, no, 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 protecting here is unnecessary. If you protect here and he goes for spikes, then you look like a ba like a fool. Um, to be fair, I don't think he can afford to spike here because if he spikes on a s on like a, hmm. I think he's just gonna power whip. To be fair, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, spiking there would have been a god play, but the Zygat is a threat, and if the Zygat switches out, it's completely fine because when it comes back, it has to take some hazard damage so like he didn't lose anything from just power whipping there so i assume he's gonna go for a leech or flamethrower so it's just flamethrowers zapdos is forced to roost here you can predict that uh, and go for a leech seed and celestila is doing here what celestila does it's really annoying with leech sheet checked and since the zapdos is also burned this is gonna be really annoying for gondra you can pretty much go for protect here because Gondor just doesn't have many options. He's pretty much forced to stay in with Zapdos here. Uh, because if he goes Tita, he has to take rocks, poison damage. Um, then Eo can protect again if, if Gondor switches because the protect fails if you switch and you can use it again. So then pr then he has to take another round of Toxic. And and then Eo can protect to look what to see what you lock yourself into. And he can also either hit because the Steel has probably Fizz Death. And this charge is also not going to do that much um, if you consider that he has the Zapdos Leech Shield, he has leftovers, and he has Protect to get more health back. So I'm surprised that he didn't Protect there, I guess in case um, in case Gondor roosted. So you guys can see, this charge only did 48. I'm a bit surprised, I thought it would do like 54-ish. So he roosts there, yeah, but Eo makes really nice plays there. Um, like he anticipates Gondor to predict his Protect, and he keeps attacking. I gonna predict the protect I think and roost it, but he keeps attacking. Zapdos is forced to roost eventually. Uh, I mean, Celis Dida is kind of getting stalled out of Heavy Slam and Flamestorm with the pressure ability, but like... Stalling out Zapdos roost is really nice for Eo as well. Um, yeah, Gondor obviously doesn't want to defog at this point in theory, he has up uh, some hazards. I mean, I guess technically he could defog, but like... I think overall he wants to have the hazards up a bit more than... Yeah, like, I think if Tar, if, if I recall correctly, his Tar is already po toxic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. His Tar is already toxic. Um, I think his Kelly is already burned, right? So there's no point in defogging the T-Spikes away because the, the ones that get hurt by T-Spikes are already status anyway. So, like, the the only thing that annoys him is rocks. But I think it's worth it for Gondor to have the, the hazards on the other side. So let's see, look at the PP here. He still has 17 discharges, 10 roosts. Uh, so Gondor's gonna be forced to roost here again because he doesn't want to lose his Zapdos, obviously. Um, Eo is probably gonna go for flamethrower again. A oh, heavy slam, okay. But it's kind of crazy, like that Celestila is like just chilling there, and like Zapdos cannot beat it one v one. It's insane, dude. Oh, fire play by Gondor predicting the protect. Fire play, but still, this is fine by for Eo. Like, Zapdos loses roosts. But yeah, Celestila really is one of the most annoying mons, and like, um, like, really one of the best, better mons that came out in Gen 7. So, like, 48 earlier was a lower roll, now he gets 55. He also gets the para there, so, um, if he gets some full paras here and there, it might be risky. Um, like, that might be bad for Eo. Um, he's probably gonna roost again, though, and Eo predicts that, and doesn't go for protect. Mm hmm. Just goes for Fame Sora. But I think he was tempted to switch out eventually because he doesn't want to risk the para. I think he's eventually going to switch into his 
Lando or Zygarde because like even if he has to take hazards, he has the, the, the lefties and the leash recovery. Like if the Zato stays in, it's still seated. He roots again on the protect. Gondor stays making gold plays. But yeah, he got some like unfortunate hacks earlier. He got a crit on the Landrus with the Jar Ball. And he got uh, the Paras on the Sableye that he needed. But I mean, it happens. It's Pokemon. What can we say? <laughs> this, the game is still over. This is still everyone's game. I assume he's just going to go for protect here. Okay, 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 big boss. Okay, big boss. So, Io goes into Salas Dealer. Um, I think he was scouting for... Salas Dealer covered the Feral Zone and also covered HPI. So it was pretty much a really great play all around. Um, I don't did, I don't think Gonor revealed his last move. Did he reveal it? So, he goes on a Kaleo here, but... Now he gets a free switch in the Toxapex. Um, Gondra kind of has to double here. Okay, comments predict in Toxapex, that works. So I think you predict him to double there. Or he, and you just leech, you just leech sheeted because even if the comment comes out, it's completely fine. And now he is gonna go Pex, I assume. I mean, he could have just gone hard Pex last turn. I feel like he didn't have to stay in there. But it was still a fine play since the Steeler was still healthy in the Kalio. Uh, is not commented up yet. Like, so, like, the Kelly couldn't really hurt the Steeler, so that was fine. But I still probably would have just gone to Pax last turn. But yeah, if you guys are like, um, if you guys like, like Gondra and Eo, or you want to see more games of them, they're going to be coming. Um, but I also still gotta do the some of the OT games, I gotta narrate over some of them. But yeah, I've se I said it sometimes, like, if you have a specific player... Oh yeah, ABR is also... An ABR game is gonna be coming versus... I missed the game versus Value, but I recorded ABR versus Genesis 7, if I recall correctly. Ooh, that actually does a lot. I actually forgot that the, that the Pex is not that healthy. I thought it was a bit more healthy. So this is actually, I think, potentially a roll. So EO is probably gonna sack his Heatran here, because I think, if I recall correctly, his Heatran dies to hazards at, like, 1%, right? So he's probably gonna sack his heat in here to get more regenerator. So if if Gonra predicts that he goes for commandy, that would be a fire play. Um because Eo definitely doesn't risk the roll slash getting parity, so he wants to get regenerator, he has he's definitely gonna switch out here. Um this is like the most obvious heat and sack I've ever seen in my life. He does just sack the heat to hazard chip. Let's see if he predicted that he just played it safe. Understandable that Gonra played it safe. But commandy that would have been a god play. Um Gonra can attack here and hope for a para, I guess. <laughs> We saw Sekos do the 24. If he has Pump, they might also kill, but... Did he already show if he had Scald or Pump? I don't remember. He gets another Para, so this is really fucking unfortunate. He already got the Para, I think, on the Thab, and the... Uh, he hit his power ups. he got a Jar Ball crit, and now... He also gets a Para on the on the Pex, a full Para. Um, so Eo has to sack either his Pex here, or... Um... He might switch into, yeah, I think, yeah, he still needs to sell his dealer because, like, sell dealer is really nice for Ferrothorn. Um, we can also still check, like, more while. But it's looking rough for Ian now. So he sacks off his, um, he, okay, he showed Skull now. I think that was the first time he revealed Skull. So it was Skull, Sacred Sword, uh, Z Hyper Beam, and the Call Mine. So he sacks off his packs there, and his Zyga doesn't have E speed. So now I guess he's gonna go sell his dealer here and go for Protect. Oh, Salas Dealer and Heavy Slam. Okay, he goes into Landros and he's gonna protect. That works as well. Um, does he go for common predicting that? He just calls. Um, because I think Eo still wants to keep the Landros around for Intimidate and stuff. Okay, ooh, okay, that is, that is, okay, okay. I thought he would've gone to Salas Dealer. The reason why Gondra Secret sorted there is because the Salas Dealer is, um... Actually, I'm not sure why he could sort it. I thought that he could sort it would do more to Celeste Dealer than Skull, but I, don't, I think they do around the same. So, there was some justice, I guess, some revenge hacks. He just got a double protect, okay. At first, I thought he would try to pivot into Steeler, but he just went for the double protect and he got it. Um, so, I assume he's gonna go into Zapdos here since he has a lead sheet on the Celeste Dealer. Nah, I can see, see Gondor staying in here, to be honest. Since he has the lead sheet on the on the Celestilla. And he can either flamethrower up. 
But yeah, he goes on a tita. Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, yeah. To be fair, um, staying in with Ferrozon probably would have been a bad play. Um, the Ferrozon can take thousand arrows from the Zygarde. So as long as Ferrozon connects Power Whip on the Zygarde, um, he can check Zygarde with Ferrozon. So it makes a lot of sense that he didn't stay in. Okay. I just saw it since he had the lead sheet and everything. Maybe he wanted to stay in. But he had no reason to make that play now that I think about it. So that's um gonna play that fine. So he's either gonna go Zapdos or Titer again here. Let's see, he goes back into Lando. So Zapdos, this is a 50-50. If Zapdos roosts and Eo predicts that and Earthquakes, if you roost you lose your flying type, then Zapdos dies. But if um Gromer predicts that and goes for his uh, attacking move here, um you can go for HPIs predicting the Zapdos to not go for roost. So this is a really interesting game. Um, it's looking like Gondra like, has like slightly better chances to win, but everyone everything can still happen. Um, there was like more hacks in Gondra's favor, but at least we got some revenge hacks for you, um, like with the with the double protect on the, with the Lando, on the Kalio. Um, she does go for Heatwave predicting an earthquake, and let's see if he gets it correct. He gets it correct. Gone with a god. Good lord. Um, so Eo's gonna go for No, actually no, Eo might not go for protect because... Okay, so he finally revealed his entire moveset. Yeah, like Gondra, I don't think Gondra's gonna roost here because Eo might earthquake here again. Well, I'm surprised that he protected actually. I mean, I understand the play because you have to protect to live another heat wave. Um, but yeah, it was just a 50-50, like... I would have considered earthquake there, predicting him to roost predict in the protect. But that's probably why you made the play, because the Earthquake predicting the Roost was a bit obvious. Um, but it's still, you now it's 50-50 again, because um, now Heatwave doesn't kill. Most likely, unless it's a roll. And... If he Heatwaves again here and EO HP Isis, this works out for EO. But if Gondra Roost and he HP Isis, this works out better for Gondra. But if he Roost and the Earthquake, this works out for EO. So this is just a 50-50-50 type of thing. Uh, there's just some nice mind games going on here. This is why I record these games, these mind games. So he roos and oh my god, how does Gondra do it? Whew. I have to hype him up a bit here. Like I don't really care that he got some hacks. Um, Gondra the god. <laughs> but yeah, I have some games from both players coming. Um, I have uh, Gondra's game coming versus Cory. I have Eo's game coming versus I think level 56. Um, I'll, everything live recorded. I have. I think another game gonna use Saul, and that's why I didn't. I also recorded that, but I'm not gonna upload that. Like, I, I was like considering to upload it, but I was like, nah, boy, that took forever. So he just protected again, but now the Zapdos. Um, okay, okay, okay. So okay, okay. So what I was trying to say is, gonna pretty much play that like a god, and now he knows the Zapdos entire move set. So now he knows that I got walls that those unless he gets heat wave burned that would suck. Um so you can I think Eo's just gonna thousand arrows here to get some chip damage on Ferrothorn. Gondra's gonna switch to Ferrothorn. Most likely here. Um there's not really a point in subbing, I don't think. Just he's just gonna T arrows to get some chip on the Pharaoh, and it's like there's no point in TDing either at this I don't think so. I think what he's gonna do is just thousand arrows because he wants to get some more lefties. And now you can go into Celestila. Um, because I don't think I would protect here. Because as you protect here with the Zygarde and he goes for spikes, it's kind of bad. Um, hmm. I mean, the Celestila is quite obvious here. I would probably still power up if I was Gondra. It's the safest play overall. I already said this earlier. So he does protect well. Gondra goes for spikes, what a god. <laughs> I would have power whipped there, but Gondra makes a fire play, goes for spikes and a protect. So he predicted either a protect slash the switch into Celestila. So now he's gonna. Okay, okay, Jarrell breaks, yeah. Since, yeah, this time he is not intimidated on the Pharaoh, so Jarrell breaks. Yeah, I don't think I would have subbed there. He realizes he has to switch out. Um, I would have switched out earlier on the turn 81, I don't think I would have gone for protect. Um, if you're here, here, would you go for lead sheep predicting a switch? Um, 
Gondor is either gonna go into his Tyranitar here or he's gonna sack his Zapdos. I don't think he can afford to stay in with Ferrothorn, even though earlier I suggested him that I, like, I would potentially stay in there, but that was definitely a bad play. He should never stay in here. Um, at this point, when like EO's team is getting lower, like his Zygarde is pretty low, but he's still like it's still like um, a wise decision to keep this Ferrothorn healthy. But he doesn't. Wow, surprised. I mean, since he has the Leech Seed and and the lefties, I guess he's he's still fine. But I wouldn't have risked that. Um. Ferrozone is one of those ones if it had five move slots. Let's not let's not talk about that too much. But imagine Ferrozone had like space to run lead sheet and protect. I know some people run lead sheet plus protect sometimes, but it kind of has like a four move slot syndrome, so it's tough to fit bows in. Zapdos is really low, so if he goes for flame sword, his Zapdos is gonna die. Um, so I guess uh, Gon was just hoping for a para. Um, slash he just had to sack something there because he didn't have a good switch in. Like he had to go Zap to Sartar like I said earlier. I still wouldn't have let the Pharaoh take the flamethrower though. So he goes in the tar, he's um, probably just gonna crunch because that hits everything neutrally. He could also edge but that comes with the risk of missing. And damn this is a fire game. But it's late at night and my con um, I cannot concentrate that well. <laughs> I think overall I have given a nice, pretty nice commentary yeah. So that only did 31 because of the. F That's crazy though. The status leader's fist dev. This discharge from Zapdos didn't do that much. I mean, it's, I guess it's a defensive Zapdos, so it makes sense. Um, I don't think Marvel can kill this. Um, like, he's either gonna knock off a Thunder Punch, but I don't think it's gonna kill. So if he doesn't get parity, he can get off a nice flamethrower. And then he's gonna. Like, you can still win this, I guess. Um. If he like, um, if he gets an intimidate on the Ferrothorn and dodges a power whip with the Zygarde maybe, and get up, gets up a sub or something like that. Not sure, but I think oh, Gondor should have this now. But Gondor got a little bit more hex, so if there's like some more reverse hex, then you can still definitely still come back. So like he's gonna um like twit KO Celestia here, I think. And then after he's gonna, uh, EU's gonna have to revenge them all with the Landreth. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, EU has to dodge a lead sheet later with his Landreth, I think, from the Pharaoh Zone as well. Yeah, he has to dodge either, but, um, knockoff does nothing. Oh, okay, guys, T-Punch would have killed then. Yeah, never mind. Or rest the Steel. He gets a burn. Ooh. Okay, that is step number one for the reverse hex. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, don't think that hex is gonna matter too much though, because more was an off quick range anyway. Okay, so he goes in the Zygarde now. He's gonna protect here to get some leftovers. Let's see if Gondor goes for SD predict in the protect. I assume Gondor is just gonna spam sucker punch. At least this turn he's gonna sucker punch. Um, actually, no, 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 no. What am I saying? Sucker Punch is a misplay. No, no okay, okay, let's explain this guy. Okay, I'm, I'm not bad, guys. Let me just explain to you. I did this wrong. So you never Sucker Punch, because if you Sucker Punch and he Dragon Dances on your Sucker Punch, then you that could potentially lose you the game. So yeah, just spamming an attacking move was the correct play. Uh, now he Sucker Punches, actually. Wow, Gondra actually gets these plays correct. How does he do it? I mean, it was pretty obvious that he like um, would attack there, but what if he did like a like a beast? So now um, he's gonna go for Jar Ball, and now Zyga pretty much dies to Hazard, so uh, EO is forced to stay in. He is gonna go for, I guess he was gonna go for Protect to get some lefties, but I think he still dies. Okay, he just attacks. He's gonna die to Jar Ball. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised that he went for Leech Seed. Now oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Never mind. He went for Leechy because he wants to get more health back, so that he can take Earthquake better from from Landris. Um, I think Earthquake two it KOs. So if Landris dodges a Leechy or Power Whip, um, if Landris dodges a Leechy, yeah, yeah, Gondor can still lose. This guy, this game is gonna be super close. He spikes there, not that it matters what he did there, because the Zyga dies to Leech Seed. Um, Landris obviously doesn't get affected by the spikes. So he had like two little mistakes there at the end, but now it all comes down to Ken. Can you dodge a leech seed? I think Alfred would tweet KO here even with lefties, so I think he has to leech seed. 
to be able to take two earthquakes. But yeah, no matter who wins, this was a fire game. Um, obviously, there were some hacks. Like from Team Preview, you might have thought this game would be a bit boring, but I like this game actually. So he does connect the lead sheet, and Gondor picks up the win most likely here. He's, um, I guess he can still crit. Yeah, you can still crit. It's not over yet. <laughs> and he does not get it, and. Jaro Ball puts it in range. Thank you guys for watching. Um, more tournament coverage is going to be coming. And have a fantastic day. Unfortunate hacks at the end. Uh, overall by Gondra. But what can you do as Pokemon? Peace out friends.